Okay. All right, so this is part two. And we were talking about your lab, but you have more than one lab. And I thought, hey, let's go take a look at it. Sure, come on. Ooh, get the secret High security. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. can't just have anybody walk yeah, in here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I am actually going to walk in. Okay. Oh, well, you're Dr. Biology. You're not just anybody. <laughs> so, what I wanted to show you is in this lab, we can do something really cool. We can measure how animals breathe. And not just like, like this, like we take breaths, but we can measure exactly how much oxygen they're taking in when they breathe, because that's why we breathe, right? We need mm -hmm. oxygen. And even if we can't see it happening, these very sensitive machines can make those measurements. So we can take eggs, those little tiny eggs from those little tiny lizards that you saw in the, in the, in the last segment, we can take those eggs and put them into a little chamber and then flow air in and out of those chambers and we'll be able to take measurements of how much oxygen those little embryos inside those eggs consume. So we're basically looking at how lizards breathe. Not a bad thing at all. I got, I got to take a closer look sure. here because it looks like, okay, so now we got some electronics going on here. So how many degrees do you have? <laughs> to show you, I pay money for most of my electronics. I'm not very handy. So, no. so ah, there are you're really smart people that, put, that make these pieces of equipment and then we just put them together and use them for this. You get the nice mixture of this. When did you know you were going to become a biologist? Was there a, a moment that you just said, hey, this is really for me? I, I was actually in college. I, I thought I was going to be a lawyer. And I really wasn't liking my classes that were designed to be free law. And it's a long story, but to cut it short, I found out that there was actually a job where you could do crazy stuff like this and get paid for it. And I thought, man, I love animals. I've always loved snakes in particular. If I can get paid to do this kind of stuff, to study these animals and figure out what makes them tick, sign me up. And so I switched my major, and that's when I became a biologist. I see. So what if I took it all away, though? I mean, you've worked really hard, and you have a great lab, wonderful research, but I like to stretch you a little bit here, and I'm going to say, okay, you can no longer be a biologist. A lot of my biologists want to be teachers, which is very noble, but I'm going to take that away as well. Okay. What career would you pick? What would you do if you could do anything? It's a really tough question because I love my job. I'd have to say, I'd probably, if, if assuming I could get any job I wanted, I'd probably be a movie critic because I, I love movies. A movie critic? I love watching movies, so it's the same idea. I'd be getting paid to do something I love to do, right, every day. Right, so I'm surprised. Do you do movies in your research? Uh, well, I guess this is a movie right here that we're making, but normally we don't use video that all that much in our research. It's just when I go home and I want to unwind, I really like to watch a good story, you know, and, and Hollywood makes good stories sometimes. Sometimes, right. <laughs> sometimes. If they get the facts straight. That's right? right. But that's what being a movie critic's all about, right? You get to find those good stories and, and tell other people about them. Now, the other question I like to ask is, what advice would you have for someone that thinks that they want to be a biologist? You know, it could be a young one, it's, you know, students that are still in, you know, before college. Could be someone that's in college, and it could be a lifelong learner. Someone that says, you know, I no longer want to be a lawyer. I want to go back to school, yeah. Yeah? Sure. What, what's your advice? I, I'd say what you want to do is you want to get involved first. So, see those guys in, in the other lab that we talked to, they were getting experience. They're just volunteering most of the time to see if they like it. And then they know. Because you don't really know whether it's something you enjoy. I mean, it sounds great. But then there are times in my job where, you know, it, it, mm -hmm. it's monotonous, it's boring, right? You do the same things over and over again, or it's, it's frustrating because you can't get something to work, right? And the only way to find out whether you love something is to give it a go. So, you know, even if you're just in high school, or even in middle school, you get involved in a science fair, right? Do an experiment at home with your parents. See if you like the, the idea, the challenges of being a scientist. And then when you're in high school, there are plenty of fellowships that will give you an opportunity to volunteer in labs. Or you could just contact someone at the university and say, hey, I got time over the summer and I want to help out and see what you guys do. Could I come in and you, know, you might end up cleaning, cleaning up uh, old dishes or something like that in the lab, not actual food, food dishes, but you might end up cleaning glassware. But still, you'll get to be around that environment and see what it's like. And if you're lucky, you'll find a nice fit between your interests and, you know, a job. Right. Get that taste. Well, again, I want to thank you. You've uh, been a great host, and uh, we You're look welcome. forward to reading more about your research. Well, thanks for coming, Dr. Biology. See you next time.